And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, July 17th. I am the host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories right here can be found in our in-print publication, News from Indian Country, or online at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. Governor Dennis Doggard ordered flags in the South Dakota State Capitol and other offices at half mass this last weekend in honor of the last recognized Oglala Lakota tribal civil chief. Oliver Redcloud passed July 4th in a Denver hospital after a long running illness. He was 93 years old. Red Cloud was a fourth generation descendant of Chief Red Cloud, who led several battles against the U.S. Army and also signed the 1868 Fort Laramie Peace Treaty with the United States government. Friends and family say Oliver Red Cloud, who served as chief starting in 1977, was a champion of Lakota culture and a defender of American Indian Treaty rights. They say he was also the leading statesman for keeping peace between Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho people. The National Endowment for the Humanities has awarded a grant to help the Penobscot Nation create an updated dictionary of the tribal language. The University of Maine, Penobscot Nation, and American Philosophical Society aim to create a comprehensive printed version of the Penobscot Dictionary, complete with an English index and searchable online database. A Penobscot Dictionary manuscript was created by pathologist and linguist Frank T. Siebert, Jr and based on his work with native speakers from 1935 to 1993 currently exists. Researchers hope to add about 30,000 to 45,000 words, phrases, sentences, and usage examples from field notes and other archive materials in Siebert's original manuscript. Frederick Chino Sr. has resigned as president of uh, southern New Mexico's Mescalero Apache tribe. The tribe made the announcement July 12th, but gave no details to why Chino submitted his resignation. Chino, a longtime tribal council member, was inaugurated as president in January of 2012. The Alma Gordo Daily News reports that in late May, Chino and Vice President Sandra Platero were each placed on paid administrative leave. The tribe said it made the move as part of a review of tribal activities, but that no wrongdoing was alleged. Councilmember Alfred La Paz is now serving as acting president. A new exhibit at Bemidji State University explores the relationship between Native Americans and both the federal and state government. The Why Treaties Matter Self-Government in the Dakota and Ojibwe Nations exhibit describes how pacts were forged and how they've affected life for the state's Dakota and Ojibwe family, according to the Bemidji Pioneer Press. The exhibit was created out of a partnership between the Minnesota Indian Affairs Council, the Minnesota Humanities Center, and the Smithsonian's Institute National Museum of the American Indian. It opened last week at the American Indian Resource Center at Bemidji State University. The exhibit shows photo photographs of Native Americans and maps explaining which land exchange hands. It also tells the stories of those who signed the treaties and how treaties signed 150 years ago continue to influence influence circumstances in current times. The free exhibit there runs through August 22nd. A weekly Indian magazine is abandoning print in favor of an online-only presence in a cost-cutting move that worries some readers who fear they may lose access to news because of the switch. This week from Indian Country Today, a New York City-based publication owned by the government of the United Nation became an online-only newsletter starting with its July 17th issue, leaving news from Indian Country of Hayward, Wisconsin as one of the last national native newspapers still printing on paper. The largest publication still in print is the Navajo Times, owned by the Navajo Nation. The magazine, which was started in 1981 as the Lakota Times, had provided a mixture of straight news stories and commentary by tribal members, and it is often a way for politicians to get their message out to Native American communities. President Barack Obama, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, and House Speaker John Boehner have all done interviews or written opinion pieces for the magazine. According to the Federal Communications Commission, just 
43% of American Indians and Alaska Natives have access to broadband internet at home. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Thank you for joining with us and come back again soon or subscribe to our publication in print.